Welcome to Mr. Wilson's Classic Physics Problems. Today's installment will be dealing with the infamous sliding block. Let us begin. In its most basic form, it is a block sitting on a wedge. But bear in mind, this is quite a common problem and can be applied to many things. For example, a skier on a ski slope, a car in neutral park in Seattle, or anything sliding down some kind of an incline. We must begin by placing a dot in the center of the object. That's where we attach the force vectors. All objects are treated as point objects in free body diagrams. So when my head are complex, it becomes a dot. We'll start with our first vector, which will be the object's weight, having a value of mg pointing straight down. Then, in order to go further, we need to determine our coordinate system. We'll go with systems that are parallel and perpendicular to the surface. We'll make it the math easier. There's our coordinate system. By the way, there's a mistake. The x arrow should be pointing down to the left, not up to the right. We note that the two triangles are similar and the theters are the same because we have similar triangles. So now we can determine the component, mg cosine theta, adjacent to that theta. And then uh, we have the normal force, which is in response to the push down on the surface of the block. And it's also going to be equal to mg cosine theta, pointed perpendicular to the surface. Now we need the uh, opposite component, so we have mg sine theta, so that will be parallel to the surface, causing the acceleration of the block down the incline. In response to the movement, we have good old friction pointing opposite the motion, back up the block in this case. And now for some math, which I know you love. We begin by summing the forces up in the y direction. We've got the y component of the weight, mg cosine theta, and then the normal force in response, which we know is also mg cosine theta. Having established that the normal force is equal to mg cosine theta, we go after the sum of the forces in the x direction. It's a very short list, mg sine theta pointing down, and then the force of friction pointing back up the block. That will be equal to ma, that is the essence of Newton's second law. We recall that the force of friction is equal to mu, the coefficient of friction, times the normal force. So normal force is something we already had determined in the uh, equation above, so we can use a simple substitution, put it right back in, and we get uh, mg sine theta equals mu mg cosine theta equals ma, once again Newton's second law. Now we notice something, we notice m. We notice it's common to all the terms, so guess what? We get rid of it, we obliterate it, cancel it out. So we also notice that g is common to two of the remaining terms, so that can be factored out. Once we do that, we get our answer, which is a equals g times the quantity sine theta minus mu cosine theta. Isn't that wonderful? Well, thanks. Sorry it sucked pretty hard, but this is my first time. Future installments will get better. Take care. Bye-bye.